Stop Talking, Start Planting is a campaign of the global initiative Plan for the Planet, whose founder, Felix Finkbeiner, is today our guest. Not only is he a 14-year-old teenager who founded the initiative when he was only nine years old, he also spoke at the United Nations 2011, and what is amazing is his commitment, his passion, and his energy. Welcome, Felix. Great to have you here. And dear audience, welcome to Talk to Hearts. Although Felix is German, we chose English as the interview, as the language of this interview, because Plan for the Planet is globally reaching out to people, and because we as Next World TV want to support the global message of this great and amazing project. Felix, are there any bad or lazy days? Because when I see you on YouTube, see your speeches, see your interviews, you're kind of always, always <laughs> full of electricity, you always have power. Where does it come from? I think it mainly comes from the fact that all this is about our future. Because we children, we will have to live with all the problems that adults are not mm -hmm. solving today. Mm -hmm. And we don't understand why there's so little action by the adults. But we, un we understand that if we only start doing something when we're adults, it'll be too late to save our future. Exactly. And this is why we have to start doing something now, and this is why we are active. I mean, this gives me chills. Did you learn that at school? Did you just have climate changes at school, and then you started to get that power to change something, to do something, to act? Actually, it started in a class project um, about the climate crisis. And when we found out about it, um, we found out about Bangari Matai. She's a Peace Nobel Prize laureate from Kenya. And she planted 30 million trees in 30 years. And when we heard about that, we thought we can do the same and we can get active. And since then, we are planting trees and we're active all around the world with children in 193 countries participating. So let's go back to the beginning. What is the vision of Plant for the Planet? When we started, we thought we had to save our future. And this is what it's about. It's about the, um, the climate crisis mm -hmm. and about the poverty crisis. Mm -hmm. Today, every day we have 30,000 people, mainly children, dying of starvation every single day in an incredibly rich world. And every year, every day we take as much carbon out of the ground, which is coal, gas um, and so on, as it took one million um, days for the sun to store it there. So we have to do something for our future. Where did you get all that knowledge from? It just came by working together with lots of other children. And we thought about this, we talked a lot about this. And the most important thing is that we work together and talk about this. And this is where all of this came. Do you guys get support from grown-ups, kind of from teachers who really support you? I mean, your father supports you, of course. Definitely, yeah. Your two sisters support you. Mm -hmm. And your team, they are 12, is that right? Yeah, we, planet for the planet. 12. We've, we've got um, we've got some employees that are um, mm -hmm. that are helping mm -hmm. with this um, with this project. We can organize all of this, of course. But the most important part is the democratic structure, yes. because every participant um, in Plan for the Planet can take part at the elections. And every year we have elections for our global board, and that and the, this global board helps lead Plan for the Planet. And the three point plan. Did you guys do that? Was it your creation? Yeah, um, the three-point plan, that's how we would save our future if so we were the heads of say? government In of short, the world. The three-point plans are? Okay, so it of course it starts with planting trees because that's what we started yeah, with. That's why we have little trees here. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, sa we found out that on this world we can plant about a trillion trees. That's a number with 13 digits. How did you know? That's um, from Yale University. Okay. They helped us find out. And then we said, why would we even plant one tree less than these trillion trees if these fit on the world, on this planet, without um, having problems with uh, making food and so on? Mm -hmm. So we can plant these trillion trees, which is 150 trees per person in this world. 150 trees per, per person. person. And that means if each person on the world would plant 150 trees, would invest 150 euro, because one tree is one euro, then we would have... Exactly, we would have these trillion trees. Okay. Um, it doesn't, um, everyone can plant it in some way they want. Uh, we don't care if it's pl planted in their backyard, if, if everyone do plants it do themselves. Do they already? <laughs> Felix, are they helping already? Yes, of already? course. <laughs> <laughs> in your, you can plant it yourself, or if it, that's not possible, you can donate. And many organizations, we do it, but also many others, they mm -hmm. plant one tree for one euro. Mm -hmm. And that's a possibility. Why so trees? The point, Why trees? 
It's because the trees, they absorb the CO2 we exhaust. Okay. And it's the easiest way for everyone to participate against the climate crisis. So okay. if we plant these trees, the 150 trees Which per person... Which is the person, easiest and most natural machine to give to back to the earth. CO2. Exactly. And if we manage these trillion trees, they will absorb one third of the global CO2 emissions. Wow. That's so, a lot. Exactly. So these trillion Why did anybody, trees... Why did nobody come up with that? Why did you guys have to invent that first? Um, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> why there's so little action... Action, that's what you always um, saying. ...doing today. There's so, mon so much money we invest against the finance crisis. Mm -hmm. But they, um, a very little amount would help to plant these, um, these trees. So that's the first point of plant for okay. the planet. We see that as the easiest point. Mm -hmm. Then the second point is that we have to um, leave the fossil fuels in the ground. Mm -hmm. From 2050 on, we're not allowed to exhaust any more CO2. Okay. And the great thing about this point is that all the technology we need for that mm -hmm. already exists today. So we don't have to have extra research, find out more. We already have the technology. Wow. So that's the second point of the yes. three-point plan. Yes. And the third point is that until that time, until 2050, we only have a limited amount of CO2 we can still exhaust. Okay. And this is about one and a half tons of CO2 per person per year. Okay. Today, that, means, that means one and a half tons, to just what, give an example? Um, that's hard to say, but today um, one person exhausts about six tons on average okay. worldwide. In Europe, it's 10 tons. Six tons on average, one six person. Tons. One person. In Europe, it's 10 oh. tons. In the okay. US, it's even 20, 20. tons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in average, six tons, and every per with that model, every person is allowed to exhaust one and a half tons. Okay. And the important thing is, if someone wants to exhaust more, yes. then they pay to the ones that exhaust less. Okay. And through this model, we can also do something against the um, poverty crisis. How do people, I mean, this seems to be so easy and so hands-on and so just, you know, right in your face. Yeah. How do people react? Do they feel kind of guilty that they didn't invent it? Do they feel shocked that you guys came up with that idea? Do they find it rid ridiculous? No, I, I don't think anyone thinks of this being ridiculous. The most, most people want to support it mm -hmm. and understand um, that we have to do it. And lots of people support this idea. I heard that your generation, if you guys won't manage to know, you know, to don't exhaust so much and to be way more wise how you um, handle energy in all kinds of ways. We don't manage. Have you heard that too? We will not survive yeah. if you guys, your generation, does not make a difference. Yeah, I've heard from many people have told us that we are the generation facing the biggest problems mm -hmm. um, from all the generations in the past. Yes. Because um, we have so huge problems, the climate crisis and the poverty crisis, and they are interlinked. Mm -hmm. And we have to solve them together. Why are they interlinked, the climate crisis and the poverty crisis? There are many um, small links between them. For example, um, if we plant trees in one place and they are cut down due to poverty, that doesn't help. Mm -hmm. And there are many little connection, connections like these. Mm -hmm. And you guys also make chocolate. Yes, that's a very interesting story. Actually, we wanted to start. Can a, um, I kind of open it yeah, and taste sure. it? Sure. We wanted to start a project with the chocolate industry. Yes. But when we tried that, um, they didn't want to help us. Why? Um, okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> Can I offer you from your chocolate? No, no? thank you. I just had a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, so they didn't want to help us, and then we mm. said then we'll do our own chocolate. And this is when we came up with that idea of the change chocolate. Mm. And mm. Um, now we're already selling it in Germany mm -hmm. and it's being sold in um, about 5,000 stores already. 5,000 stores? 5,000 stores. And the important thing is that it's, of course, CO2 neutral mm -hmm. and, um, and it's fair trade. And it's yummy. It's exactly. really yummy. <laughs> <laughs> and also from, um, from the chocolate, 20% mm -hmm goes to plant for the planet mm -hmm. and it's sold for one euro so every for every five chocolates we sell we can plant a tree. I love that chocolate. Great. It's great. <laughs> I love that. I want to buy yeah. some. It, up to um, today it's only sold in Germany mm -hmm. but in future in the next year we will try to have it in other countries as well. America's well. great for that. You guys yeah. have to go to America. I know already who will love to support you guys in this. Great. So you come back to we'll me. We'll do if that. You, yeah, yeah please. You come back to me if, as soon as you guys are ready for other markets.
I we'll love that, that idea. <laughs> I love that how that intertwines with what you're doing. Um, one other question. You guys are the official counters for new trees that have been planted. Is that right? Exactly. Um, about a year ago, mm -hmm. the UN handed over the official tree counter of the world to us children mm -hmm. by handing over the billion tree campaign, which means that every mm. person that plants trees, if it's, if it's governments, if it's organizations, mm -hmm. if it's just people planting trees themselves, then they tell us and then they report to us children mm -hmm. how many trees they have planted, how much they have done. And uh, this is this is amazing. This is an amazing tool. For I us. mean, math is your favorite um, favorite subject <laughs> at school, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you remember just all those huge names. I'm so impressed by that. Thank I mean, you. you just love that. That's amazing. Do you know how many? Because you always talk about we children, mm -hmm. which I love. How many children did you guys inspire so far around the world? It's hard to say how many children are actually participating. Mm -hmm. It's definitely hundreds of thousands being part of the project. Hundred thousands part of the project. Exactly, just planting trees and being active. And then we also do something which we call academies, mm -hmm. okay. at which we children educate other children that they can um, yeah, give presentations themselves, um, do, do plant, uh, planting activities and all of this. Mm -hmm. And at these academies, we've already educated 15,000 ambassadors for climate justice. That's amazing. How do you inspire the kids or inspire the school? It's, it's not that hard. Um, generally, people participate and they love it and they understand, everyone understands that we have to be active ourselves. That's about our future. Mm -hmm. We will have to live with the problems. So it's not hard to inspire people. So which countries are participating? They're all, over, all around the world. In over 190 countries, there are children participating. Are there any schools different in other countries than like Germany? Are Americans easier to deal with? Or Brazilian people easier to deal with? Did you notice any differences? No, actually, we didn't. Um, so we have it, one language it, here. It worked, exactly. Great. It worked all around language. the world. Yes. And for example, in South Africa, we had academies in private schools. And um, a day after, we had one in a slum in there. A slum there. Um, and we noticed that in both, so it in goes both places, religions. everyone wants to participate. Mm -hmm. So it works all around the world. Um, now, working with teenagers, and you must know this by now because you're 14 and you started when you were nine and nine years still a kid, and then you got a teenager and I was 14. Are you drinking? No. Smoking? <laughs> no. But you kissed a girl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't say the name. Um, so coming back to the question, is it harder to motivate teenagers? No, I don't think so. It, it works with children and with teenagers. Yeah. Um, but we, normally they're so hard to motivate, you know, they're kind of, it's not cool. Do they find it cool? I think um, we haven't had big discussions question. about that. No, it works. It works. We've noticed that it works all around the world. We are now also starting academies mm -hmm. for teenagers as well. Mm -hmm. um, for the youth, they can also be involved at the academies and it works. Um, is there any advice? I mean, you, for you, it's very natural, but for us grown-ups, it's not. So is there any advice for parents, for grown-ups? How do you motivate teenage for such a positive thing um, and keep them from destructive behavior? Would there be any advice? No, I don't think I can give any <laughs> advice on this. No. So how are you easily to motivate? With chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a possibility. <laughs> okay, I see that. Um, so what is so amazing about the whole thing? I don't know if you're really aware of that, because that's to me the ma amazing thing about Internet and the global impact Internet has and the ripple effect that you really Skype around the world, that you start something and it's like a wave, you know, mm -hmm. that goes around the world. Um, when you go to school and then after school, do you do homework or do you go right to Skype? You, um, Skype with your friends in Brazil, you Skype with your friends in South <laughs> Africa, you have guide of meetings and then you do emails. Does it look like this? No, it's, it's, not, it's not as much as it seems. Maybe every day in average I spend like 20 minutes, half an hour mm -hmm. um, doing such things. But of course this is, this is very important for us mm -hmm. children. Um, about mm -hmm. 20 years ago at the, um, at the sustainability conference, mm -hmm. uh, there was a girl speaking there. Mm -hmm. Um, and in these 20 years, or since there's YouTube, she got about 20 million clicks um, 20 on her video. million clicks on her video on YouTube. But today, there um, there are movies, there are videos on YouTube mm -hmm. about similar topics that get about this, uh, about 20 million clicks in just two or three days. 
Wow. And um, and this gives us hope that through the internet, it's a huge possibility yes. to connect. Um, yeah, and to share those ideas. You guys also created the "Stop Talking, Start Planting" song. Yeah. How did that happen? Actually, it was um, an ambassador for climate justice. Mm -hmm. um, one from Austria, for example. They just um, one, they just came, sent us an email and said, "Look, we made the song, and it was just amazing." Can you hum one? Sorry, no. <laughs> I, I shouldn't try that. No. <laughs> okay, here I get your boundaries. So first, the first boundary is Felix. Wow. Um, what is still intriguing to me is that you get all the kids. That you. What is the the big work behind the scene? Who is doing all that? Um, the important thing is that it's it's mainly local initiatives, local projects um, or groups that do their own projects all around the world. But you guys are the center in Tutzingen, Starnberg, which is close to Munich. Yes, so that's the there, there's a center, but there's not much activity in the center. Okay. We, support, we support the projects all around okay. the world, but most of the organization, everything, is done by the groups themselves. Do you guys also have like great big conferences in each country for just coming together? All the kids that do this action, they come together? Are you um, doing sometimes that Sometimes in, in a few countries um, there are meetings mm -hmm. like these, but um, we children don't understand the real meaning of physical meetings because it If, really? we have to, if we have to fly, this is um, CO2, we exhaust, and yes. this is why if you've been we much prefer, question a lot, yes. yeah, we much prefer to have it over the internet. We talk, um, but we don't have to exhaust CO2 and we can, yeah, that's It's, what are we Are you guys so do. aware about that? Are you really saying instead of, you know, would be so cool to meet you in Brazil or would you so cool to hang out together, you really say, no, we want to save the planet, this is our aim, this is our intention, yes, that's so we goal. rather Skype. Yeah, and that that's has the same do. effect. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> I mean, that's so cool. You guys really right. have to. How are the industries um, operating with that? Do they take? Do they want to be inspired by this? Because they need to travel all the time in order to have their meetings. Yeah, um, I haven't seen them doing the same, um, thinking the same way. But there are some companies that are doing their conferences over the internet. But generally. Uh, maybe uh, from other reasons, but there are also a lot of companies that support us, mm -hmm. um, support us doing these projects. Okay, um, until today, and as far as I know, you guys have planted 2.6 billion trees around the world. Is that It right? It was 12.6. 12.6. 12.6 billion. But of course, not us children. But um, this is the official tree counter, yes. and these are all the projects that have uh, been done in the last years, in the last six years. For my little mind, I'm <laughs> 30 years older than you, but my brain doesn't function as fast as yours. <laughs> How does that go? 12.6 billion trees around the world. Please explain it to me. How does it go? It's, it's just people, just um, local organizations planting these trees. Um, mm -hmm. the, um, there's also one big, um, one big group, which is the um, government of China. They have done the biggest amount. Really? China? Yes, exactly. China has planted wow. 2.7 billion trees. Um, China. In 2009. So okay. this is um, this is the biggest part, the Do biggest you single group. Why China. Normally, you know, the yeah, the China news had a lot China of deforestation, and they had a lot of deforestation, yes. so they needed trees. So okay. that's the big end. But we also have um, thousands and many, many thousands of people that um, sign up for planting one tree. So we've got all these pledges. Are you also working with colleges, with universities? Are they also as engaged as schools are? There are some activities from um, universities and colleges, but not as much. Really? Yeah, we Is haven't we haven't concentrated or focused on them yet. Okay. But maybe we could try someday. Yeah, please do, because I really think that the generation students they also are great for interacting, engaging that way. Maybe, um, yeah. You have spoken at the United Nations. How did the idea come? It was actually quite a strange, um, um, strange thing. We were we were in, at the conference in Japan, mm -hmm. and on the flight back, mm -hmm. um, I was sitting next to a lady, and um, after about one or two hours, she asked me if I was Felix, and I said yes, and we found out that she was the head of the conference no, really? um, of that day. Yes, and this is when she invited us. Um, to come there yes. and to present um, the idea and the consultations, the three-point plan um, at the United Nations. Were you nervous? Yes, of course, I was extremely nervous. There. Really? <laughs> what did you do for stage fright? Did anybody tell you what to do? No, there's, there's nothing you can do, I think. <laughs> But I mean, it's amazing. You said your speech was not, you know, you didn't read your speech from a piece no. of paper. You didn't write it. 
Do you have a media trainer or do you have no. a teacher or your father is working with you? Uh, no, not much. Of course, I get a little help um, from a few people. I ask for help, but mainly it's it's not that hard. It's um, just ideas we have we oh, want great. to talk about. And yeah. But you know that most people are so have so much stage fright they wouldn't even come close to where you are. <laughs> yeah, of course, I'm also <laughs> very very nervous. Um, um, how long was the speech? Speeches. About 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Did you practice at home and did you like kind of pretend as if the guys were already sitting there or did you just go on stage? No, I and can't do that. I've tried that once. It just doesn't work you're pretending you're talking to someone. Um, but yeah, you, I never you got down the point some of keynotes. that. Yeah, I, I wrote down a few um, bullet points I might talk about and that's, yeah, and I had that in my pocket just in case. And then I just went there as well. Were you disappointed? Because I saw on YouTube, I saw some comments about that great speech that you held. And um, many comments were how disappointing that a few seats were kind of left, you know, empty. Were you disappointed yeah. when you saw that? It was a little disappointing because lots of people yes. um, were missing. There was a, a very important conference on forests there. Yes. And they don't have conferences on forests there often. Yes. It was the um, inauguration meeting for the International Year of Forest, Forest, and on that important day, many of the delegates, or uh, there was not that many people. Okay. And that's of course sad, but but it was fine. I think the most important was also um, for the internet. Mm -hmm. There lots of people watch them uh, watch that um, video on the internet, and that's probably of equal importance. So, what impact did your speech at United Nations had? I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea? It's probably very hard to find out. Do you know if it changed some of their minds or their action plans? I hope. I, can, I can't say for sure. I don't know what exactly people have done in response to this. But I, um, but I hope that some people have started um, thinking differently. Because we just we children just don't understand why there's yes. so little action that's by the adults. You, that's what you, I mean. I'm really, we've, yes. we've discussed about this a lot. Maybe. Maybe it's just the meaning of future because for mm. most um, most of us children, um, yeah, for most adults, future is like 20, 30, or 40 years. Mm -hmm. But for many of us children, 2,100 might still be in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's an academic question for the adults. And also your children. If, then, this, yes. uh, CO, uh, if the um, ocean level will rise by one, two, or three centimeters or seven meters. Yes, what you always but, repeat is. Exactly what you said already yeah. and what you said at United Nations. We do not understand why there is so little action. Exactly. What is going on in your mind and what do you feel when you say that? Are you angry? Of course we're angry. We've got these huge problems and the adults know it since decades. The, um, yeah, at least since 20 years since the um, sustainability conference. Yes. And just a few months ago they celebrated this um, sustainability conference. But we did children didn't think there was anything to celebrate. Because in this time, like, nearly nothing happened. Did you tell them? Yeah, that's about what we told them. But that's what, about what I said at the UN. And how did they react? What was their reaction? Do you feel there's guilt? Yeah, I, I definitely think so, yeah. And what, when you ask people the question, when you go um, to politicians or when you talk with, you know, CEOs, what do they say? Why is there so, so little action? We do not understand it. There is no real excuse. I've never heard a good reason. That's why we're still thinking about yes. this because we've never heard a real good reason um, yeah, why there's not. But you really don't understand happening. it. Yeah, we don't understand it. Because as you show it, it is so easy to globally yeah. do something. Exactly. That's amazing. That's really touching. Is there any kind? I think your father told it once in an interview. There was a really disappointing happening experience that you had on stage in front of people. Yeah, that was that was the thing with the chocolate. Um, when we started that part, um, that idea, it was actually I was I was giving a presentation uh, in front of about forty percent of the global chocolate um, mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. But um, and we had a we had an idea that. All the companies of this um, of this um, sector mm -hmm. would um, give 0.01% uh, percent mm -hmm. of their turnaround to mm -hmm. us children. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we could have a real uh, a fee, yes. um, a, a future fee. Yes. So everyone helps to um, support. And you the have project. a product. It's not just donating. You know, you really buy a product. You're exactly. not just donating money to you guys, you get something back, which I find Yeah, the idea was great. that all these um, companies support us, yes. but they didn't want to. And that was, that was um, shocking and very disappointing. So they didn't, didn't they react at all? You were standing on stage, 
the industry people were sitting there, and yeah. you explained it to them, and then and you were asking again can, and again, and again, and no one wanted to and support us. And you asked, can you guys raise your hand if you want to support us? Exactly. And then there was no one raising hands, there was complete silence, and nobody said anything. Exactly, and that was that was terrible at first, but then I talked to some other, um, other um, ambassadors mm. about this, and soon after, someone had the idea of making our own chocolate, about making the change chocolate. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> which I think makes great. you guys even more independent, and yeah. which I think always there's always a reason for something. Yeah. But I think you know, even if you don't understand it now, I think you standing on stage, you asking that question, nobody is reacting. Then you say that's shocking. That's shocking. <laughs> shocking. <laughs> then you leave the stage, people laugh, and then there's complete dead silence because they feel intimidated, they feel guilty, they feel shocked themselves. Is that right? Was yeah, I think that's about what They happened. will never forget that situation. They will always feel... So. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. I'm very sure about that. Um, you inspire so many kids, so many teenagers. You definitely inspire us grown-ups. Great. Um, who inspires you? Who inspired you? The most inspiring was definitely Mangahi Matai. Mm -hmm. oh, she sadly died about a year ago, but... All her life, she planted trees and de she did all these activities. How did you know? How did you come to know her? It was actually through the internet, um, by accident, that we found out about her. Uh, um, because I had to find out about the climate crisis. When you guys had that subject at school, exactly. you were doing some research on the internet and then you found her. And then I found yes. out about her project and the tree planting project. And did you meet her? Yes, that was great. At this UN conference, mm -hmm. she was also there, and that was the second time I um, got to meet her, and it was just great. And she was incredibly happy that because of her idea, um, Amazing. children started to plant trees again. as well. Amazing. How did you feel exactly when you saw her? Did you feel kind of happy, nervous? Yeah, it was. Of course, I was nervous, and it was great um, the way she reacted. And what did she die from? Was she already older? Yeah, she was. She's about 70 and she had cancer. Okay. How sad that was. Yeah. You're very sad of kind, but of mm -hmm. course you keep her memory alive. Exactly. <laughs> and do you have another inspiration except her? Um, Prince Albert from, uh, from Monaco was also great to meet. Um, he seems to be so stiff when you see him. <laughs> yeah, what makes but, him cool? But um, yeah, he just started, he um, supported the Billion Tree okay. campaign um, with Bangari Matai. Okay. And they they started the uh, billion tree campaign and they, uh, together and they were both patrons. Yes. And uh, yeah, and now um, he's also a patron of Plant for the Planet. Are you working with volunteers, people who would like to volunteer? Apart from, of course, we do this in the end of the show um, to donate. But apart from that, how can people volunteer? I mean, you are such a ball of energy, <laughs> and people love energy. I mean, love passion and love energy and love to be inspired to do something because most people, and that I can say that as a grown-up, you kind of feel powerless. And I think that's why a lot of um, grown-ups are saying, yeah, we do not do a lot, there is so little action, because we feel as if we have no power. But now you give them power, as a kid, <laughs> as a teenager, what can they do? Can they just go to your um, website, support you in money, support you in person? Yeah, there are a lot of things. Um, of course, plant trees, our goal is that everyone manages their 150 trees. Mm -hmm. And if someone sets themselves that goal mm -hmm. and pledges on the website telling, I am going to plant 150 trees, then that's that, that's amazing. Yes. Um, otherwise, you can, the everyone bar. can also help support the academies. Mm -hmm. We're trying to um, make more and more academies all around the world in all countries of the world. And if there's someone out there that wants to help us organize academies, mm -hmm. then that's extre um, extremely extremely valuable. Um, yeah, we always need partners to be able to do um, these events. How open are industries, big companies who have lots of money or who always want to do, you know, donate something? Yeah. How do they erect? We are often um, contacted by such, um, such mm -hmm. companies because they often want to support us. Mm -hmm. And now, by now, we have many of these companies also. They're actually participating at the future fee. Mm -hmm. And um, it's great when they, they give a... They give a fee, um, they give taxes mm -hmm. to us children, uh, taxes for the future. Are you also giving speeches at um, companies, at large companies? Have you done that already? Sometimes, yeah. My first big speech, yes. when I was, a, yeah, I was still nine, was in front of the Toyota company of Germany. So if I would you get you in, in one few big companies, 
he would be open to have a speech? Definitely, that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah, a deal? Great. I get you Thank in. You. Okay. <laughs> okay, now to your book. Baum for Baum, tree to tree, tree for tree. Tree for tree, exactly. Um, now we save, we children save the world. Felix and friends, how did that happen, that book? It actually started about um, two years ago. Um, I don't know why we started um, writing this book, but um, yeah, we just worked together. We were about 25. 25 we, kids writing exactly. one book. We wrote, everyone wrote parts of it. And no then, argument? No, it worked Really? Well. <laughs> yeah. And um, after that, we translated the book. And um, right now it's already in seven different languages. In seven languages? Exactly. And how long does it take, the process? Um, actually, not that long. We had the problem. We wanted to have the book finished within two months. And we actually managed that. We really did? Yeah. Okay, so you go to school. You still have your international school. That's why your English is so good. Exactly. Better than mine. Um, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I do think so, unfortunately, but don't say that loud. Um, <laughs> no, you, you guys have school. You have school until four. You have some homework to do. You are in Bavaria. Bavaria has high standards at school. And then you write a book in two months? Yeah, it's, it, I, I only did a little. Um, I wrote like a few Amazing. pages of it, but it, it really wasn't that much of my work. It was mainly us working together. So, yeah. but these were German kids. Exactly. We, um, we started the book in Germany, but this is already the fourth version. And meanwhile, they're, they're, it's about double as, um, as many pages, and we've added pages from children all over the world. How is media responding, uh, responding to your work? I mean, I know that you had an interview last week at, on television. Yep. Do you have a kind of an interview every week or every month? Maybe every month, but it's, it's, it's um, not me. It's mainly other children being okay. interviewed as well. Um, yeah, it's the so most you don't want to stand in front. You always exactly. say it's about That's us the, children and I'm just one of those. I That's don't the wanna... important thing. Okay. This wouldn't work if it was just me. It's just powerful because we are so many children. And I only do a very small percentage of the thing and there are interviews all of, all of the time, but it's very seldomly me. It's it's, mainly the other children, I like that. Course. So it's really about, it's about the message. It's not about your ego. It's about exactly. getting a message across. And yeah, it's doing, about our future. And it's sharing. It's about your future. It's our future, of course. And it's about sharing something together with other kids with exactly. the same intention. Um, when you travel abroad, when you go to America, South Africa, do you always have interviews? Do people come to you and you have interviews in different places? They're often interviews because that's very, um, that's very good to spread the message yes. to as many people as possible. So that and happens. Do you have a funny story that is in, that when you go to other countries where you feel like this is a complete different culture? Um, not a funny story, but it, it's often quite interesting uh, in many countries. What is interesting about it? Sometimes we get to visit um, uh, the countries. Yeah, in, in China, for example, we spend about two or three extra days um, just walking around Guilin. That's a, mm -hmm. um, a city in the, uh, southern China. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing what we see there. So how many countries, or which countries have you seen so far for your message? Um, there are a few countries I've visited, but I don't go to most of the countries. That's children, in the, that's always the children in the area mm -hmm. doing it. But I've been, for example, in China mm -hmm. or in, uh, in Japan also, and then in the US. I've been Was there in any country where you the easiest connected with the kids and the grown-ups? Sorry? Was there any country where, where it was the easiest or where it was really easy, particularly easy to connect with the guys, kids and grown-ups? I don't think it's easy. And it's, it's, I don't think it's hard anywhere. It's easy actually all over the yeah, world. Yeah, because that's you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not aware that you're a people heart opener, I guess. <laughs> um, so talking about celebrities, you were talking about Prince Albert. Um, you also inspired um, Giselle Bündchen, we have you here <laughs> on the photo. Harrison Ford, Black Eyed Peas. Um, Harris, what do I have? Harrison Ford, Black Eyed Peas, Prince Albert, Giselle Bündchen. Who else is there who we know? Not that many. Was there I anybody think. particular cool, not funny, but maybe really intrigued to help you, where you felt, wow, a real commitment? Um, not that much from the celebrities, to be honest. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Was she very committed? Um, I mean, she is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, not so much to plan for the planet, but she does a lot of projects. She works together with the UN a lot. So mm -hmm. she's very committed and helps a lot. But did yeah. your guys like try to get to George Clooney, to, um, 
what is his name again, a very famous actor who was also very engaged in um, climate projects. Julia Roberts is very engaged. Yeah. And um, Leonardo DiCaprio. Did you guys connect with them? Because I no, know that they're very... We haven't started, we haven't tried that, no. But how in God's name, being a journalist, being a talker, I know how time consuming it is to connect for those, with those guys, even if it's just for photo in quotes. How do you connect to them? Um, also important CEOs, politicians, no, we don't, you get them. We don't connect to them. It's generally that we are invited to some conferences. For example, Giselle Bündchen, she mm -hmm. was doing a press conference and we were invited mm -hmm. to come there. Mm -hmm. And that's when we made the um, photo. Or Harrison Ford, mm -hmm. um, it was actually at the conference. And we were sitting in the conference and there was a huge crowd, a crowd of people mm -hmm. um, walking by. And... Um, My father said, I'm not sure who that is, but I know he's important. So we just went there and we made the photo. And after that, we asked the people around, who was that? <laughs> and really? then we found out it was Harrison Ford. And that's, that's how that photo came. Generally, okay. it's, not, it's not a big organization on it's our part. It's more you happen to bump into the people exactly. and then you grab them. Exactly. And um, was do. there any celebrity who didn't, you know, kind of resist it and said, no, not interested? Did you guys also have that? Or no. are they so intimidated by all your power <laughs> that they cannot say no? No, we haven't, we haven't had uh, anyone who, who was against the project, against the idea. And you have the um, shirt. Maybe we showed it to the camera right there. It's a plan for the planet shirt. May you stand up just for a second? Of course I can. <laughs> And so, can we buy those t-shirts? Yeah, we sell them. Um, you can all buy them from the website and you can just order them there. How much are they? I think about nine euros or something. Okay, that's, de that's decent. We can <laughs> yeah. do that. Are there, do you sometimes reach limits like, I really honestly say, where you say, I'm so tired, I have my school. Are there days you're, you feel also maybe demotivated or don't you have them at all? No, um, that doesn't happen um, that often. Really? Because it, it's, it, I just can't repeat the fact that it's not as much okay. as it seems because I don't give that many interviews, I don't give mm. that many speeches. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's just so many pe uh, children getting involved that uh, it seems, for me it seems much more than it is. Do your sisters help? Yeah, they are, um, they are also participating in my older sister. She all, already also gave a lot of presentations. I've never seen her so far. I've seen yeah. your father, but your sister is helping. <laughs> yeah, she's also, yeah. And how many people are you at Tutzingen? I, th I think your um, company or the initiative is at your house. Is that right? No, not anymore. Okay. Actually, um, about four years ago, uh, I had an argument with my father because I said, um, we have so many people calling us all the time and we have so much work that we needed an, an employee to do it. Mm -hmm. And then my father said, if you can manage to get an employee to get the money, then that employee can work in our house. <laughs> and, and we managed yes. nice. and, and it grew. And then we had about 12 employees. Mm -hmm. And then we had a problem that not all of them can be in our house. Okay. So after, um, after looking, we, um, we managed with the um, Tengelmann mm -hmm. um, that, that um, we can have our office in one of the Tengelmann centers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now we have about 17 employees working. 17? Exactly. And you all, you were raising the money for 17 employees to be employed. Is that right? Exactly. And yeah. just because your father said, if you can do this, <laughs> which is a great sentence to say to yeah. kids, actually, because <laughs> normally we always. Did your um, parents, were they very supportive of you guys? Did they um, say at one point, no, this is too much. We are, you know, we are fearing that you are not a kid anymore. Of course, there's always the fear of parents that you stay a kid. It's too much with your school. Was there a point when you guys had an argument or when your father was kind of worried about that? Um, Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> We But haven't talked about that. <laughs> Do you always agree? Um, to my parents? Yeah, no. you and your parents. No, of course not. You're a typical teenager in that way, yeah. aren't you? Okay. Um, man, you, you rock, really. You really <laughs> rock. You. That's amazing. So how can we as Next World TV help you? Um, I think spreading the message Which is the most uh, important idea. Spreading the message that everyone has to plant 150 trees and that we can only solve these problems we have if we all work together all around the world. Okay, and how can our viewers can help us? Um, the donation account, of course, will be shown on the screen. Exactly. So that's 150 euro is minimum so that we can plant exactly. 150. Exactly. We can plant one euro um, 
for uh, we can for one euro we can plant one tree. Yes. Um, but if you can, if if someone sets the, that the goal, they can plant it themselves, so they can just start um, with uh, with a few euros at okay. the first tree. So it's there's no there's no minimum. So in the name of Next World TV, we plant 150 trees. Is that okay with you? Great. Yes, yes? that's a great start. Okay, <laughs> that's a great start. So Thank please, you. the audience, dear audience, help this great man in his project. <laughs> spreading out the word, maybe just giving a few euro is already enough to start That's with, maybe great, planting yeah. one tree we did already <laughs> here and we gave a few euros. Um, Felix, we come to the end of this amazing interview and amazing inspiration. I will definitely talk a lot about you and I will definitely connect great. you with some companies, with some influential guys and I think the rest of Next World TV will help that too. Great. Um, but you have, there are two points you have to promise me. I'm not going to ask if you're going to be a politician because everybody <laughs> does that. That's boring. Um, when we see each other in 30 years, you might not recognize me, but um, you're going to keep that passion alive. Do you promise I me that? I will try that. I Are will. you doing that? Yeah. Okay. And the second point, give me five. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was great. Sure. Really great. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You keep my fingers crossed here. and um, that will be great. Thank great. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, dear audience. Please help us for this great project to get bigger and bigger and bigger and expand and spread the word. Thank you. Thank you.